Welcome to Friday Forum, June 17, 2022. Big one today, um, as we have officially rolled at dawn. Wheels are up, liftoff is, uh, is happening. The aspect ratio on this picture has been stretched. It's unfortunate, but um, this is a, it's a big week. It's a culmination of many things, but a big week and uh, very excited to see it happening. On that note, transfer portals live. Our first IRB transfers are going through. I think at last count I, I had received, it was something like 125 orders had gone through on the transfer portal, moving people into the IRB, 140 according to JM, update my numbers here. Um, so this is happening. You know, the, the liftoff is, is underway. We have, I think 800 people have been notified so far. We're, we're still certainly uh, testing, ensuring that the systems are resilient. And um, you know, many of us internally did a bunch of transfer portal work, um, you know, transitioned ourselves over to the, to the IRB. Orders are going out. This is all uh, very exciting. So I just want to give a quick round of applause and, and, and pause there for everyone that's been involved and uh, appreciate everything that's taken to get here. There's, there's going to be a lot more scaling, a lot more work to be done, but um, yeah, big moment. Um, I want to shout out Galit who set up um, APM. So I'm going to totally forget what the acronym stands for, but basically we have live monitoring at the app level, uh, traces, metrics, and logs. So uh, observability, you, you might say, uh, of our systems. So uh, this is going to really improve the debugging experience for engineering. And I've been, I've been told that this was uh, just a side project. <clears throat> so Galit took this on herself and just said, hey, this is not, not being effectively implemented. I'm going to go ahead and do this myself. And so I'd love to see that initiative. And thank you. I'm sure many, many will appreciate that work. Uh, we have three roles that, that are filled now. Um, so three, three new team members coming to join us are our senior product. Uh, well, our, our senior PM role, uh, we recently had the offer accepted there and then two support associate offers were also accepted. So we'll get to those on the, the uh, hiring update, but very excited to uh, finally have some of these, uh, these roles closed and be very excited about the candidates that accepted. Uh, blood panel product highlight email went out this week. So you can kind of see a little snapshot there, but we've, we've revived the product highlight email uh, went out to, I think, 25,000 people. We used to send these out more consistently. And um, I think this one actually really boosted the visibility of blood work. Um, we sort of, in the app, we've ebbed and flowed in terms of how visible some of these features are. Um, and so these, these product emails are really great. We also have a nutritionist marketplace survey that went out and we have results in. I don't think we've done the full analysis just yet, but um, more, more learnings to come there. UK website work. So I think next Monday, we're going to be launching this work. Levelshealth.com slash UK is going to be the subdirectory. And um, we're going to start the translation management system. So there's a ton of work involved here. It's going to be a big step. And um, yeah, first international presence for our website. Also added an international waitlist link to our checkout flow. So a lot of times we, we actually get a ton of um, somewhat dissatisfied outreach from people who have tried to purchase levels. They get into the checkout flow and then they find out Huh, for some reason, it's not accepting my address. I'm not sure why. There's not really a deep explanation of what's going on there. And so adding that, uh, that waitlist link allows them to jump over and, and know that there will be um, an opportunity to join level soon. We got pod podcast experiments going live with uh, Genius Life with Max Lugaveri. And we're also doing a deep dive into top podcast channels. I was really impressed by this idea. Um, just briefly, the partnerships team is having, uh, essentially, Athena is going through podcast existing shows and looking at long-term advertisers on those shows, even if they may not necessarily fit the audience at first blush. So like athletic greens on a car racing podcast, for example, was what Tom used, but I love this because essentially it's looking for uh, maybe counterintuitive examples of resonance that's happening for wellness products in a, a different audience. So uh, that was a great use of leverage and a smart experiment. I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. Uh, new partnerships memo is in work as well. Look forward to that. And then we launched the Getting to Green Community and Blog Sourced Recipe Resource. So this is a, it's an ocean page. This is also great. It's like a first, uh, very simple, scrappy approach to getting recipes that are circulating on Facebook, in the community, wearable challenge, and putting them up uh, along with our blog resources in a, an easy to access format. Uh, lastly, we're going to be adding Carta Tax Advisory Resource for employees. So um, this will help Specifically with options, you know, there's a lot of complication involved in, unfortunately, in equity. And so we, we want to make sure that we're leveraging the resources that we have available. And Carta has a really nice program for this. 
And then we're also bringing in Fury to help build out our accounting processes and systems. So some of the stuff can, can oftentimes be behind the scenes, but um, yeah, excited to have that available. Marcus Philly repping the, the levels in a totally separate and unrelated sponsored uh, IG post here. Um, we've got some stuff that David's going to talk about on the scoring and uh, now page 2.0. New swag is available. If you haven't signed up, definitely get yourself to threads, find the link and or reach out to Mike D. And let's see, yeah, a bunch of other great stuff going on here. Uh, Assemble just coming up this week. I want to shout out that. All right. That I want to welcome VJ. VJ is a general partner and founder of the A16Z Bio Fund, which is where Level's seed round uh, came from. Uh, VJ has been an, an just an awesome partner and personal, I think, friend to the team as we've been growing and an amazing advisor and mentor in many ways. Uh, adjunct pr professor of bioengineering at Stanford, founder of Folding at Home. Awesome guy. Really happy to have you on the, on the forum today. Thanks for taking some time to chat with the team. Yeah, thanks for having me. So um, generally, VJ, you've, you've seen us from 2020, really, I think even before that, 2019, uh, you've seen where we came from, come, some of the crazy stuff we've decided to do with culture and, and team building and velocity and all that. I, I'd love to just generally hear from your perspective uh, how you feel about culture and velocity and distributed work um, as, you've, as, you've, as you've seen levels take all these things on. Yeah, so a couple of different things there. I mean, one is, I feel deep down that culture is critical to uh, the success of a team. And the reason why is that it's one thing to build a team that's, let's say, 10 people or 20 people uh, without a great culture and still have really strong contributors and work. But scaling is the tough part of anything, scaling and growing. And culture, I think, is the way to have the, the founders, the leaders uh, keep people in the room when they can't be in the room anymore to scale is that uh, that gets uh, sort of replicated. Uh, and, you know, it's really it's it's everything of how you do things. It's how you hire, who you hire, uh, how you sort of hand. How do you live such that you are actually not just saying the words of the culture, but you're actually living it um, in terms of what you all are doing to scale. It, it's really kind of amazing to watch because I can't think of another company that is really pushing the boundaries as much as you are in terms of uh, virtual first, uh, no meetings, uh, memos, all those things. And um, sort of shifting paradigms is typically pretty hard because human nature is the one thing that seems not to change. Technology can change very rapidly. People don't change that much. Uh, but it's been amazing to see how you've embraced new technologies to maybe take how people work and now scale in a way that I don't think people were able to do before. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, everything is an experiment. And I, you know, what I'm really appreciative of inside this team is the willingness to accept that, that many of the, the core processes we have in place are experiments and they're subject to change and just raising hands and saying, hey, we need to do something different is, is uh, much appreciated. Um, BJ, I'm also just, I know that you're, you're personally as lead on BioFund, uh, you're, you're exposed to a lot of the cutting edge of technology. And I'm just curious what you're excited about in the health space, metabolic health, uh, the future of biotech. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's I think, a, a particularly unusual time right now because health in general has been pretty uh, resistant to tech coming in, making changes. Uh, you know, we often talk about healthcare being a dot matrix printer or fax machine kind of culture. And that's really not an exaggeration. I mean, it's still... Literally, dot, um, dot matrix printers and fax machines, the old legacy stuff is hard to rip out. But I think what's really started to change maybe about like five, 10 years ago is technology starting to really make an impact in getting inroads and, and changing things. So in terms of like enterprise centered health, like B2B health, uh, I think there are plenty of examples there. Another thing actually though, that is, is I think much newer is consumer oriented health and, and sort of going to consumers first. And as healthcare shifts towards value, uh, and also there's other um, tailwinds, like even just COVID itself, I think put health uh, in each of our faces. And we had to be really the, our own GPs in a sense, um, deciding the health of ourselves and our families and our loved ones and so on. I think that's gotten people thinking, you know, what else can I do and, and what should I be doing? And maybe my doctor is a consultant, not the person who's uh, dictating everything. And, and people are looking around for what they can do and they want to have something that works and especially 
that makes it easy to work. And I think that's the hardest part is like, it's one thing to say, I'll work out more. It's another actually, and eat better. It's another actually to do it. And I think people are looking for solutions that will just help them do what they want to do, but they just can't find a way to do it. And that's a consumer oriented healthcare, I think is a huge future. Well, those are trends we'd love to hear about. Um, I, if there's any parting words for the team, um, you know, from your perspective, obviously things are a little bit hectic in the markets today. Um, generally speaking, there's a lot of uncertainty about where we're heading in a macro sense, but um, you know, we, as, as a team, we have strong traction. We've, uh, we, we closed our round. We're kind of, uh, you know, sort of just buckling down and facing the work ahead. And I'd love to just, if you have anything to share with the team on uh, conditions, market conditions, building a company in, in uncertain times, I think everyone would appreciate that as well. Yeah, you know, so I came to the Bay Area in 1996 and so I have kind of lived through a couple different downturns. I remember, you know, after the 2000 uh, dot-com bubble popped, uh, there was already a big shift there. Uh, you see it even simple things like traffic was like horrible and then got actually quite pleasant. Uh, which was a uh, kind of a weird thing. And there was that cycle, there's 2008, there's been multiple cycles like this. And in each one of them, it's usually right after this is when the best companies get built. Because now you actually can't uh, raise just on promise, you have to raise on fundamentals. And you actually have to build a company that provides something of value that makes revenue and ideally um, has a path towards making profit at later stages. Uh, that not just grows, but grows in a way uh, that um, makes sense from a business model perspective. And so I think that's why the best companies get built now is that it, you kind of have to, uh, you, you don't really have a choice. And when you have, when money is easy to raise, you actually can uh, sort of play with other levers. So I, I think the real obvious thing to do is nothing magical, is just to do what you want to do in the first place, which is build a great company, uh, think about value for your customers, think about value for the company and, and how to scale in a way that is sustainable and, and will, will drive both top line and ideally bottom line as well. And so those are things, not, I don't think those are radical departures. I think that's actually what you've always wanted to do. Uh, and now maybe if anything has changed, the one thing is that we just have to be careful that uh, the market is less forgiving. So we, we wanna make sure that when we take bets, we're, we're thoughtful for what we do that when we um, go aggressive, that we have plan Bs and Cs. It's, I think, not a time to play it safe, but it's a time to really be pl planning and, and thinking through it uh, such that um, if it is more difficult to raise, that you won't need to, or you'll raise on the best conditions. You know, much like the raise you just did, I think worked out quite well. Great reminder, it's time to build. Yeah, um, exactly, well said. VJ, thanks a ton for, for joining us. Uh, I know you're a busy guy, but if you'd like to hang out, we got a full meeting ahead and I uh, would love to have you. But um, otherwise, I know the team really appreciates all your support, uh, the support of the whole A16Z team. And um, yeah, have a, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thrilled to be here. I'll, I'll watch this later on Loom, uh, which I, I, I very much enjoy. I want to thank the team for, for all that they do and, uh, and for uh, such an exciting product and exciting project experience for consumers. And thrilled for what you've been able what you've already been able to do for people and what I think the future will bring. Thank you all so much. Amazing. Thanks a lot, VJ. Right. All right. Quick culture and kudos aside. We've got Jeremy and Sonia in Chicago. And then I love this one, Dom and Rob at the Swedish Metabolic Health Symposium in Seattle. Um, just love seeing that that community. Uh, and then of course want to highlight the woo from from Sam. Just uh, many, many people names on the screen, names not on the screen have contributed to getting us across the milestone of liftoff. This is the first time that people are A, able to, to access continuous real-time information from CGM into the Levels app. Um, it's the first time that we'll be able to activate our data set for research for potential analysis publication in the future. Um, it is the first time that we have, uh, I think, established ourselves as a legitimate contender, not only in consumer products, in health, but also in, in research, in science. Um, this is a, it's a huge thing. It's, it, you know, it's taken years to get us to this point. Many things were uncertain. This is sort of like a symphony. There are, there are like literally different large scale moving projects that had to, to mesh to make this happen on the logistics side, on the engineering side, on the research side, on the IRB. Um, so just wanna say thank you to, to everyone who's gotten us here. This is, um, this is a big step, just the beginning though, which is hard to believe. All right, um, we're gonna try a little something here. So 
we're going to do something like a culture pearl each week, just to try and create a space to resurface themes um, that we've you know built through through the company. I'm not going to read everything on the slide, but this week we had a uh, a book club. It was Extreme Ownership this week by Navy SEALs Jocko Willink and Leif Babin, and the uh, the recording is. Uh, available in threads, I think. But ultimately, we had some really great discussion. I really appreciate everyone who showed up, uh, who listened to the book. I'm sure many people also listened or read and didn't have a chance to join. So I recommend the discussion. Ultimately, you know, there are, there are good takeaways, less, you know, breakthrough <laughs> sort of takeaways. But I think what it comes down to is that we really built uh, much of our culture on similar concepts, which is that ownership is an opportunity. And every time somebody steps up and takes responsibility for an outcome, it alleviates the others around them and encourages the same behaviors. Um, we have a framework with the DRI, directly responsible individual, um, which enables a person to be the singular accountable thread in any one project. And that's key because it aligns everyone else's aware awareness of who's in control, whose decisions they are. However, this breaks down if uh, we don't show ownership. If at the end we, uh, if at the end of a project, regardless of outcome, we're assigning blame or shifting blame, rather than creating a closed loop of learning, ownership, and improvement. Um, so I think that that's kind of the big takeaway was just that extreme ownership, meaning we're not looking for the scapegoat. We're ultimately disagreeing up at, up front, committing on the path forward, owning that mission, all in alignment. Um, everyone has to be marching in the same direction, and thus you have to be bought in and reinforcing that why for everyone else. And then when an outcome does arrive, whether it's, you know, quote unquote, positive, negative, um, owning that outcome, learning from it and improving. Um, so those are the biggest things I think. And then lastly, I really liked the, the simplify and prioritize and execute. So the concepts of relax, look around, make a call. I think that really aligns with our approach to guarding deep work, um, not being a hectic, crazy culture. We don't embrace chaos. We're all about um, taking things as they come, making the, the right call, putting in deep work, putting in uh, true thoughtfulness. Uh, and then lastly, reducing complexity, you know, taking that minimal step forward as opposed to, um, you know, building a, more of a waterfall approach where we're, we're building a ton of inertia in one direction and aren't able to stay agile. So anyway, um, just wanted to dive into that. If you're interested in more of this, I recommend the book. I also recommend the discussion. All right, over to, oh, level shows you how food affects your health. The main thing is still the main thing. Uh, even after liftoff, we're going to be learning a tremendous amount about um, the resonance of our product in this direction over the coming weeks and months. So it's an exciting time. All right, experimentation and learning section. I believe this is Jackie. Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to share a bit about an experiment we ran with one of our newest partners, Turtle Creek Lane. Um, in May, we ran a bunch of promotions on Instagram uh, with TCL. And um, so this account, just for a little bit of background, is run by Jen Houghton, who's an, in an interior designer and influencer. Um, and Casey had been in talks with her for a while. And we finally got Jen on board to be an affiliate um, in our program this year, which was really exciting. Um, and last month, we ran a bunch of Instagram promotions, including a giveaway. Casey did an Instagram Live with Jen, which was awesome. Um, and these promotions ran, um, generated 163 new members, um, which made TCL the number two partner code in May after Sinclair, um, and the number eight partner code over the past 12 months, which is pretty amazing, um, for a totally new partner. Um, Jen had talked about CGMs a little bit before, um, she and her family had been using them for a while, but never talked about levels before. So this was pretty incredible to see, um. And then we also saw an increase of 5,000 new followers for Levels and 6,000 new email signups um, from these promos. Go to the next slide. Um, and so just a high level, this experiment was pretty different from past ones that we run before, um, mainly because of Jen's content. So most partners that we work with are in the health, wellness, nutrition, biohacking space. Um, TCL's content is completely different um, from most of the partners that we work with, um, really focused on home, family, um, interior design. Um, and she's talked about CGMs, like I mentioned, but 
um, that her content overall is not really focused um, exclusively on health. Um, so this was interesting. Um, and we dug into a little bit more um, about why, why this performed so well for us. Um, and if you go to the next slide, um, there's a few factors that we typically look at um, when we're looking at potential ex experiments to run or potential partners. Um, we'll look at audience demographics. So for example, male versus female audience, are they US based? Uh, we'll look at the host relationship with their audience. Um, this is really key for us, especially with a high price point like ours. We like to just make sure that the hosts have a really strong influence over their audience. Um, this relates to engagement rate, which I'll share a little bit more about how, how we calculate this um, in a second. Um, authenticity is really important to us. So are they talking about levels from personal experience? We require that all our partners are actually levels members and have tried out the product and can talk about the experience with the personal testimonial. Um, and then platform, a lot of our partners have a presence on multiple platforms, um, YouTube, Instagram, podcast, and performance on various platforms might perform differently. Um, so we'll take a look at each one, um, to assess if the experiments, uh, worth doing and, um, to forecast it. Um, and as we increase the number of experiments that we'll be doing, which we are, um, we're doing a ton more experiments this year, um, and campaigns that we run, will these contributing factors are what we'll be trying to better understand. Um, and if you go to the next slide, just a quick um, double click on on how we're measuring the host relationship with their audience, which I think was key to this this experiment with Turtle Creek Lane. Um, we take a look at engagement rate, and for Instagram, we calculate this by looking at the number of likes and comments, and divide by that by the total audience, the total number of followers. Um, so for Instagram, the industry standard for good engagement rate is between one and 3.5% um, of the total audience. So this is where most levels partners who perform really, really well for us will fall. And Turtle Creek Lane's average engagement rate is over 4%, which is really impressive. Um, and the TCL team shared with us that more than 10% of our audience actually watched the story about the levels giveaway um, and click through and conversion rate. Uh, we're really high com overall compared to what we typically see uh, with Instagram stories um, across other partners. Um, so this signals a particularly really strong relationship that Turtle Creek has with her audience, uh, which of course correlates with high conversions as we saw. Um, and then uh, just a few key take takeaways and next steps um, from this experiment um, that are really exciting for us. Uh, one, this is a really good signal for us um, because it shows that there are absolutely partners and audiences that aren't purely health and wellness focused that can perform exceptionally well for us. Um, and this opens the door for us to go out and experiment with a bunch more creators who are not explicitly health and wellness focused, um, which is really exciting. So more experiments to come. Um, and secondly, just um, more internally, a note for the partnership team is something that um, I'll be looking at more and uh, with time is just weighing engagement more um, than content focus as we look at assessing new potential partners um, and forecasting partner prom promotions moving forward. Um, engagement's going to be super important and we'll weigh it a bit more in that process. Uh, and then lastly, we'll buy, be um, prioritizing experimenting with new partners uh, with high engagement rates, even those whose content is not purely health focused, which is super exciting. Um, there's a lot of uh, runway there um, that we haven't looked into yet. Um, so yeah, excited for what's to come. Thanks, Jackie. Um, um, I, 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 I particularly, particularly like, like the, the oh, I'm getting an echo here. Really like the engagement concept um, and, and also the authenticity of the validation or the authenticity of the, um, the recommendation. You know, I think that is something that there's this uncanny valley of product recommendations that people see all the time where this is clearly just being read from a script and there isn't a real um, you know, heartfelt uh, validation happening. And what I've loved about all of our, you know, really the vast majority of the affiliates we've worked with so far is how authentic it really is. You see that with people like Kelly and, and Hyman and others. So um, yeah, I just really appreciate the partnerships you focus on finding that. I think David. Yep. Cool. So uh, last week, Alan walked us through what we learned from now V1 and where we were heading with now V2. Uh, really focused on simplification and investment on the platform that's going to become our uh, that's going to facilitate our behavior change purpose for our members. And we've had another round of learning from feedback, um, and we wanted to show where we've landed from last week. So, um, 
as we talked about last week, we're going to be having this this new um, game that's going to be centered around uh, spike goals and stable glucose. So we we shared this last uh, yesterday, but if you go to the next slide, I wanted to share how we're some of the thinking that happened over the last week. So um, what we want to do, what we're what we're now thinking is that we're going to be simplifying the space that we showed last week even further to promote an area based on engagement and rewards. And we'll be doing this through brief transitional animations that draw attention when something interesting happens. So um, you're not seeing it here in the screenshot, but because these are there's limited space. But last week you saw that there was this new um, user focus, member focus. Uh, uh, you can do everything on the same screen, whether it's look at your at the, at the hero game up top, see all of your data, or see the above the fold insights that will push to you. And last week we showed that there'd be an animation that would kind of when you had a new insight, it would ping the bottom and flash and draw your attention to it. Um, some of the usability feedback we had was that that would be even better if that was uh, right at the top, the first thing your eye sees. Um, so what we're doing is we're creating a space at the top where it's sort of a two-way conversation between levels and the member, where whenever something happens that is, is, is interesting, we have a platform to draw your attention to it. And it's also one of the foundational uh, core system hooks that we'll use as we weave in game dynamics for behavior change into here. So what you'll have, you'll notice on the, the slide in the far left is your, your stable state. When there's, nothing, when there's nothing new, you'll see how you're doing throughout the day, uh, both at the top as, as well as how you're doing right now um, in terms of that, that qualitative readout on, on your glucose and how you're trending. Uh, but when something does happen, that will briefly transition to show you what that new message is, whether you have a new insight, you've kind of have a one points of sorts with, with new stable hours coming in, or if you've just done something that we want to give you a little bit of a reward for doing something positive. So uh, what you would see is um, each of these three, uh, three screens to the right, you would briefly see a little animation and I'm not animating it here, uh, that's not done yet. And it wouldn't be this specific emoji. We'd have something a bit more levels on brand, but it would kind of animate in, feel fun. It would show up for two or three seconds with a message. So if it had insights, it would say something like, hey, two new insights for you, check them out below. Um, let's say you come back after four hours and you've been really stable after a period of instability, we might shoot you a really positive reward here uh, with a little confetti and a little trophy that says like plus three hours stable time. Great job. Keep up the good work. Um, after three seconds, I would fade back to your familiar screen. So what we're seeing here is retaining the, the ability to push you something that's really important for the moment, but not arresting the entire screen and having people understand, like be confused about where they're at it'll degrade off and then they have the choice to opt into any of those experiences there. Um, the, the final thing on the right you're seeing here is, uh, as you know, we, we really want to incentivize logging. So um, after you add a log uh, for the first few times or on some variable reward ratio, could we, um, could we do something where after you add a log right away, we have something, something playful like, got it, like meal digesting, um, flash in for two seconds or so. So um, yeah, as Alan, Alan clarified here, uh, stable time, not points. Sorry, I misspoke there. Um, but we're, we're optimizing for stable time throughout the day. And I think next slide. Okay, so just to go back to one other thing that Alan mentioned last week, we showed some of these earlier earlier screens on what we were thinking in terms of the guidance layer. So uh, as, your, as your glucose changes throughout the day, how do we help people understand what that means and what, what's happening? And having a readout that ties into the system of the stability ring up above around, oh, you're spiking, you're recovering, you're crashing, things like that. So this is where we were. And if you go to the next slide, we'll be looping this into the, that framework where we have a simplified stable kind of hero unit uh, where we have that, that space for this. So as you transition into a spike, you might see a brief animation with something that represents the spike. The, qual the, the text layer below is gonna have the qualitative uh, description about what's happening, uh, plus an action that you can take based on that. Um, you can, there's, a, there's a Google Doc that's out there in the product form. You can take a look and provide feedback on some of the, the different states that we're going through here, but the, um, this is the direction. So we, we think it's a simpler, uh, simpler UI. Uh, we're gonna get more feedback on this. Um, huge uh, shout out also to the data science and research team, um, Taylor, Helena, Lauren. Um, they're, they're coming up with the algorithms to actually power the, the glucose state changes and trends and spike detection that's going to drive the drive and power the the stability ring it's going to be based on um more of a a spike algorithm that maps onto our members perceived reality of what that is and also is heavily rooted in the science um so that we can close the loop on both what members are seeing and it's relevant to their health and this will all hopefully serve as a stable foundation that will start to layer on that behavior change loop that we're getting to um 
more to come on that in the next couple of weeks. But the first thing we'll be doing is uh, suggesting food improvement swaps. So that's all I have for now. And if you do have any more feedback, please let us know in threads. Awesome. Thank you for walking us through that. All right. Um... Okay, hiring update. So Lynette Diaz and Taylor Meniscalki are joining as support associates. I'm excited for that. It's going to be July and then October. And then Cosima is joining as senior product manager. So very excited about all three of these um, teams growing in great ways and cannot wait to work with all these folks. Um, and then we have an updated careers page. Ms. was this, did you want to say anything more on this one? No need. Oh, you're muted. Updated careers page, uh, levels.link slash careers. If you, um, first of all, it looks beautiful. But secondly, if you want to find the open roles, they're still there. Uh, we're still looking for visual designer, software engineer is perennially open and support associate is perennially open. Um, it's just a refresh visibly. But if you, um, if you or someone you know makes a great fit for the levels culture, please send them this way. We got that same slide there. All right, metabolic pearl of the week from Casey. Hello, today's metabolic pearl is on micronutrients and their involvement in metabolic health processes. This gets a little sciencey, but I'll try and boil it down to the key points that matter for us and our members' health. So first, what are micronutrients? Micronutrients are small molecules we get mostly from food that are involved in innumerable metabolic processes and are necessary for glucose regulation and ATP production. Examples of micronutrients include vitamin C, D, E, B vitamins, magnesium, selenium, chromium, and many, many more. Micronutrients function in several ways, one of which is that these molecules can be structurally incorporated into proteins. So an example of this is the micronutrient selenium being incorporated into proteins called selenoproteins, um, which have selenium as part of their protein structure. You can see this in the photo on the right here. And what selenoproteins do in the body is act as antioxidants and also serve key roles in immune cell function. A second function of micronutrients is to serve as cofactors that allow for chemical reactions in the body to work. So you can imagine that if there's this protein in the cell whose job is to convert molecule A to molecule B, that protein might need a micronutrient cofactor to bind to it to allow it to set off this process and function properly like a key in an ignition. Third, micronutrients can act directly as antioxidants, meaning molecules that neutralize the damaging metabolic byproducts that can build up in the cell and can hurt the mitochondria and our DNA and other cell structures. You can see in this image at the bottom right here, um, vitamin E and vitamin C, and they're acting as antioxidants here. So this OH with a dot next to it represents that dot represents an unpaired electron. And that vitamin E molecule is going to actually take that unpaired electron that could be damaging to the cell, neutralize it, and allow that OH, uh, oxygen, hydrogen with the unpaired electron to become water. So that's something that, uh, that micronutrients can do. And a common feature of antioxidant molecules like vitamins is a hydrocarbon ring that can accommodate that unpaired electron. In this slide, we're inside the mitochondria at the mitochondrial inner membrane, where so much of the action happens in the final stages of glucose uh, byproducts being turned to ATP. So on the left, you can see a dynamic representation of what's called the electron transport chain that ultimately leads to ATP production. On the right, you can see a static illustration of this exact same set of proteins. And in this illustration, it actually lists which cofactors are necessary for each of those individual proteins to work. And so you can th see things like vitamin E, B2, selenium, B12, B5, B1, zinc, vitamin C, many more. This um, image is from an awesome paper called Feeding Mitochondria from the journal Clinical Nutrition. And it's just so important to remember, we have like 37 trillion cells in the body, roughly. Each of them can have thousands of mitochondria, each of which have innumerable electron transport chain sets of proteins, and all these need micronutrients from food to function. So um, this is just a visual example of, of how those are so important. Zooming in on magnesium, this micronutrient is involved in over 300 enzymatic chemical reactions in the body. And Something that I think is under-recognized is that for ATP, which is represented here in this photo here on the top left, for ATP to be biologically active, it actually needs to be bound to magnesium. And you can see this magnesium here in this little pocket of ATP, uh, which is necessary for ATP to be biologically active. Deficiency of magnesium can lead to lots of metabolic issues like insulin resistance, reduction in glucose uptake, decreased insulin release, and much more. And you can see in this image on the right, magnesium is represented by the little red stars. And you can see how it's involved in several different processes within the cell that are involved in metabolism. One challenge we have with micronutrients today is that we have a very nutrient depleted diet. 
And as many as half of all Americans are deficient in at least some critical micronutrients. And this is partly because of soil depletion and partly because our diets lack diversity with at least 75% of Americans not eating the recommended amount of vegetables and fruits or high quality animal protein sources. And the majority of our calories these days coming from refined forms of commodity crops like wheat, corn, and soy. So restoring soil health is likely a, a really key part of how we're gonna improve micronutrient composition in our food and our diets. And a movement is happening in the space from transitioning conventional farming practices towards more sustainable regenerative farming practices that allow for healthier soil Oil that allows for more micronutrients to get into our food. So how to get these micronutrients? There's many key micronutrients we should consider when thinking about metabolism, and I list eight here. This is certainly not comprehensive, but here are eight important ones, including vitamin D, magnesium, selenium, zinc, B vitamins, alpha lipoic acid, manganese, and chromium, and some different sources for each of these. But basically, to keep it simple, remember to shoot for as much variety of unrefined foods as you can. And this is just scratching the surface, but for more information, there's two great articles on our blog um, and a whole new episode, whole new level episode coming out soon um, with uh, the CEO of Eat Real, who's working for greater accessibility for sustainable uh, micronutrient rich foods um, in schools. So look out for that. Thanks. Love all that. Um, great imagery and great connection back to the levels blog content. content. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Yeah. Hi everyone, yeah, a quick it. update on company objectives. The main objectives remain the same. On the key initiatives, what are the main objectives? A lot of progress on this left off, getting that uh, to our existing numbers. Uh, really great progress there. On the metabolic health uh, product, um, we made a lot of progress on the behavior design framework and also selecting three behaviors to experiment with, which is around food swaps which is the burn butter of our app experience and turning them into a behavior and habit, uh, activity after meals and uh, fasting. And really starting with the first one, learning from that and then applying the learning in the system to the other uh, behavior uh, interventions. On the UK of top, uh, still a big priority and uh, uh, we have resourced it for launch. Uh, there is some discussion around what is required post-launch and making sure that uh, it is supported correctly and the scope is right. So more to come on all of these. Uh, talk to you all next week. Thanks. Bye. Cool. Made it happen. Let me switch back. Actually, we're at the, uh, we're at the individual contribution, so I'm going to stop the share here and pull up my participants list. And taking it from the top. All right, uh, which means me. So um, I'm obviously, I think, overwhelmingly excited about the liftoff uh, moment having arrived. And, um, you know, I, I just feel a tremendous amount of gratitude to the team for pulling something off that I would say had a uh, low probability of success in the beginning. There's just a lot of moving parts, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of risk. It's quite bold to, uh, to try and build in the way that we did. And um, I'm just really proud that we're here. And I appreciate so many people who stepped up to the challenges and took on pieces of this and, and worked together to make it happen. Um, personally, um, let's see, I'm, I'm excited to this, this afternoon or tomorrow, I'm going to be replacing the radiator on my 2001 Toyota Tundra, which blew up on the side of the highway yesterday. And, uh, you know, honestly, I, I could use a little wrenching project. So that's what I'm excited for. Miz. Nice. Good luck. Um, on the, uh, uh, obviously excited about liftoff and, and uh, kind of all the changes that come after that. I've been saying that for a few weeks. Um, this week, what came clear to me is um, there's a really cool, like, lattice work of culture. Um, there's a lot of different pieces that all come together nicely and someone externally had, had referenced it and it was a, a nice zoom out moment for me that it's, it's no one piece, but it's like all these pieces together and they all support one another. Uh, and so I, I just enjoyed that perspective. Um, personal slash work, starting to plan my first think week, which I, I have never done. So looking forward to that the week after assemblage. Uh, and then on the personal side, separately, planning a trip to uh, to Banff. All this this Canada talk lately from all these Canadians has got me warmed up. So uh, hopefully gonna get up to, to Banff uh, and maybe see Riley along the way. Very nice. Yeah, I'm hoping to follow suit sometime soon. Ben. Uh, yeah, echo everything with liftoff. It's just so cool to be here. It kind of feels surreal that it's like, it's not here, but it actually is. So uh, just appreciate everyone's work on that. Um, also super cool to see Riley this week. That was the first time that we've seen each other in a number of 
COVID years. So uh, it was very cool to see. And it was just like old time. So that was awesome. Um, and then personally, um, last year for my birthday, Pam got this guitar that I've been wanting for ever. And it took a year to get here and it just got here this week. So super excited about that. And I will find some time to play along on it. So that's it. Very nice. It's awesome. Jason. Um, obviously lift off. So uh, I think everybody's going to talk about that. I think for me, I, th I was most excited today about TCL. I think it validates the sort of shift in persona of what we were looking at in terms of who we were targeting and uh, really broadens the opportunity uh, from from what I think was originally uh, or what I was seeing. So really excited about that and great to see those numbers and kind of excited to see what's next. Um, really excited to have met with a lot of different teams uh, and everybody is super excited to collaborate and looking to push data into all the different parts of the organization. Uh, personally, Folks arrive later today, so get to unveil the house and uh, we'll see how that goes. Nice, fun. Casey. Oh my gosh, lift off for sure, of course. I think one of the things that makes me so just grateful to this team about how we've done lift off is just that, I mean, we've really done it our way and such a high integrity way. Um, you know, it's, forging these relationships, building trust over time, using our culture and transparency and all these things to like make these relationships actually work, not skirting any corners. Like it's just really beautiful to see and just a testament to the levels way. And I'm just so grateful for our team. Um, other fun things. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I saw um, one of our investors, Haim, the band, they came to Bend this week in this like really awesome small show. And so I got to go see them and that was really fun to see our rock star investors, uh, um, you know, performing. And I was wearing Levels and some people at the concert came up to me and asked me about my, or knew about Levels. And so it was just like, oh my, it was very exciting. Um, and I think the last thing I would just mention of a highlight of the week, I recorded a podcast with Jackie, um, on culture. It actually might've been end of last week, but, um, it was so fun. And I'm just, um, so grateful to, to Jackie for like having these deep conversations about culture and, um, just for all the amazing work that she's doing. And that partnerships update was just absolute fire. So that was really just a highlight of my week. Can't wait to hear that one. Yeah. Thanks to both of you. Chris. Uh, definitely lift off. Um, and really more about just how the team dealt with all of the things that go bump in the middle of the night during a liftoff, like the, you know, from Scott wearing his pilot's hat to jams, haikus, to just the attitude of like all positive. Like um, I've been through a lot of launches and there's usually a lot of stress, a lot of yelling, a lot of like nasty emails, none of that here. Um, it was just really fun to watch. Um, so not only what we do, but how we do it speaks volumes to this company. Um, second, uh, um, on the levels front is, um, Casey sun, um, glasses. They just put a huge smile on my face. When I see those, those things are awesome. Um, personally, we are finally breaking 75 degrees here. So it feels like summer's actually finally arriving in Montana after we all, all got flooded. So, um, spending a lot of time outside for the first time before the next rainfall comes. I was curious how the, how the flooding was going over there. It sounds like. Uh, not uh, as bad as Yellowstone, but um, so a minor flooding, but not nearly as bad as um, what's going on on the other corner of Montana. Good. Well, enjoy the weather. Sissy. Have to plus one, Chris, on that. I think it's a joy watching all the things that go into liftoff from the sidelines being not as involved. It's so awesome to see all the energy and um, like camaraderie that goes into such a successful liftoff and um, and all the, the kinks along the way and working through them together. Um, I had a bunch of really energizing conversations this week with a few of our amazing members to try and get them more involved in initiatives. Um, a few of them are already doing things within our community. And so um, giving them a spotlight and supporting them um, is kind of the next step 
and then had a few energizing conversations with Casey, Sonia, um, Karen about community building with Casey and international expansion. So a lot of exciting conversations happening. Uh, on the personal front, heading to a outdoor concert this weekend and potentially an indoor skydiving trip. Uh, so we'll let you know how that goes. Sounds great. Have fun. Hui. Yeah. Uh, Work-wise, obviously lift off, um, and also the progress we've been making on now V2. Really excited about that. Um, yeah. Um, Personal-wise, my family has been sick for the past two weeks, uh, so kind of really excited for Loki weekend and you know just not doing anything. Uh, I really hope everyone can recover fully soon. Yeah. Yeah. Get well soon, everybody. Ian. Uh, on the business front, um, everyone has already said everything that I also appreciate about Liftoff. Um, it's been super fun to be uh, adjacent to all the people who have been doing such great work on it. Um, on the personal front, last weekend, I drove uh, a few hours to North Texas and played an epic pickleball tournament. Um, there was a heat advisory and summer came super early to Texas this year and summer in Texas is already bad. Um, there were people withdrawing from singles events due to, to like threatening heat exhaustion. Um, and I, I have a friend who's a, who's a sports nutritionist. And so I consulted with him about what to eat and drink like before, during and after and took his advice and like totally was able to keep my foot on the gas through the whole event. Um, and just had an awesome time came home with, with two medals. So I'm still, I'm still like glowing, uh, in, in the, in the after haze of, of that. Pickleball is a, a growing obsession over here as well. Um, enjoying it a lot. We'll have to play at some point. Jen. I am, of course, excited for Liftoff. Really also excited for the new um, uh, map designs or just the like, like scoring and stuff. Really uh, excited to see how it's all progressing. And Personally, I'm just happy I made it out of the woods with my got lost for my years, and just looking forward to my Father's Day to shower Chris with all the love he deserves for being an awesome dad. Awesome. Jesse. Uh, it's going to be lift off for me uh, work-wise. Uh, I'm excited about all the work ahead, too. Um, personally, um, I have gotten to a pickleball groove myself in Houston. Um, so I'm gonna play some this weekend and also get out to the golf course. And I'm finishing my class this weekend also. So uh, this is a big week uh, work and personal for me. Congrats, it's awesome. Justin. Uh, for me, it's uh, probably assemblage next week. It's always exciting to spend time with everybody uh, more sync uh, and Personally, I've been reading a book called Hyperion. I don't know if anybody's ever read it, but yeah, it's uh, pretty good so far. And I'm going to probably just read most of the weekend outside. It's nice and sunny. Very nice. Lauren. Let's see. Lift off. I'm really excited about all of the product and design work that's happening to really create a guided and beautiful experience for our users. So I think that's going to be really exciting to see happen in parallel with liftoff and getting a little more scale. Um, I was walking out of my building yesterday and a guy saw the levels patch and, uh, and long story short, he invested as part of our the crowdfunding portion of our series A and uh, had tons of ideas and questions and was just so enthusiastic and excited about what we're doing. And I thought that was just really cool. And he ended up by being like, well, I'm rooting for you and can't wait to see what happens. So that, that was cool. Um, personally, I'll just go on the pickleball thread. I haven't tried pickleball, but my mom is really obsessed with the idea of trying pickleball. She hasn't tried it, but she's looked into like classes. And anyway, so it is, she is more on trend than I am right now. And that is my update. It's the best. It is a fun sport, no matter what your level of expertise, it seems like, which is the best part. Maz. Might be on read only. Sorry, hard time. No, hard go. time finding that on mute. Yeah, thanks. On the on the work front, I think you know, second Lauren's uh, sentiment. I think on the product uh, and design and engineering side, there's a lot of process improvements that we're doing, and hopefully improving not only the functions within the groups but also 
the interface between the groups. So really excited about all the work that's going on there and big thanks to, to the leads there. And all, you know, obviously uh, some of the work is shown up in the new product designs and uh, really excited about that. On the personal front, uh, traveling in Europe uh, for a little bit, uh, working out of here and just getting used to time zones. Uh, being awake until 4 a.m. is kind of weird, but, uh, but it actually works because I'm a night person. So it's been fun. And I can be up before JM, which is a huge thing. <laughs> I've always woken up to JM texts. Now I can do the opposite and, uh, and pay back. Tables have turned. Enjoy the trip. Mercy. Um, echoing what everyone else said, lift off. It's just really exciting to have gotten to this point and checked part one off of the list. Um, and then personally, yeah, pickleball this weekend and I got a bike recently, so I'm going to be biking around and hopefully just have a lot of water with me so I don't get too hot. Get up, Mike D. I don't know what pickleball is and I'm not going to talk about it. Um, not going to say lift off, but yes, lift off and um, definitely following along with uh, the product development stuff with, with Moz and Lauren and Taylor. It's been really neat to, to see that come together and I'm excited for what it's going to do for the product. And then lastly, like from the book club yesterday, I think everyone agreed there weren't really many new like actual leadership tactics, but the, the big takeaway was like this mind sh mindset shift of ownership. And it's something that we've done a really great job at down selecting for. And it's just really humbling and, and inspiring to work with uh, amazing people that, that share that mindset. And uh, Liftoff's a great example. Love it. Riley. I won't say Liftoff, but I'll kind of say lift off. I just seen so many good examples in the last couple of weeks of people coming together, solving problems and working through things. And it's just, it's so inspiring to see and be a part of. So that's, uh, that's on the professional side and the personal side. Uh, great to see Ben and Theo this week. I was really, um, really pumped about that. So really, uh, really excited to get out for a nice dinner with them. And I was, uh, I, I totally missed the, the boat, boat on getting that picture into the forum. Sorry about that. Sonia. Um, okay. So I have so many. One, I had my six-day check-in this week, which was awesome. I feel like I'm in the startup time warp where I've been here for two days in two years, but it's actually been 60 days. So it was great to reflect on the last two months and look forward. Definitely the Coke challenge. Thank you all for playing along. Um, I got some great giggles out of everyone's videos and can't wait for people to see it when it um, hits Instagram. Um, super energized with the new team members, had great conversations with Sharu and Jason this week, um, and it was so fun to meet Jeremy in person, and then super excited for Assemblage next week up in SF, and especially excited that Sarah Gottfried's coming to dinner. I started reading her latest book, Women, Food, and Hormones, and I stayed up way too late last night reading it, um, and this weekend I'm going to go on a nice long bike ride and catch up on all my life to-dos, so that is that. Sounds great. We'll jump to Zach. Uh, yeah, uh, personal front. Um, so my, my wife is a lawyer too, but she's uh, she works at like a crazy busy firm and she gets her first chunk of time off and I miss her. So uh, I'm super stoked to actually get to spend uh, time with my best buddy. Um, on the professional front, um, so many things. Liftoff is awesome. The app is looking amazing. Um, everything is looking super cool. I'm, I'm, I had a great conversation with Jason at the uh, beginning part of this week. We're gonna have a lot of opportunities to work together and I'm super stoked uh, about that too. Love to hear it. Enjoy the time. Okay, we're uh, 60 seconds over here, but action-packed week. Thanks, everybody. Um, tons tons more to do. See you all at Assemblage. I'll actually be on a Think Week, unfortunately, but I'll be popping in here and there. And uh, have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy the weather. Stay hydrated. <laughs>